Good evening, party people of the world, and welcome back to the bar. You can tell it's the bar because there's a label in the bottom right corner of the screen. In case you're confused with your lefts and your rights, it's on the left-hand corner. Everyone else is wrong. I hope everyone's having a wonderful day today. If not, we're gonna try to make that better with, you guessed it, a cocktail. That and perhaps some games later. Just kidding, there will definitely be games later. That, and maybe we'll even be doing the dishes. Why do I say that? Mostly because I heard the dishes over there. And it seems that the air conditioner has begun. Hey, pretty boy. Hey there, beautiful lad. That's my retort to that. Is it, is it good? Are you a beautiful lad? I'm a pretty boy. I know I am. Did you notice that my face is hopefully significantly more shaved today than it was last week? I took those comments and I improved upon them. I actually, oddly enough, I tried to wax my lip over the weekend and it did not work at all. Like, I completely failed. I had to do exactly the same type of manicuring on my face this week as I had to last week. These are the trials and tribulations of my life. Where I went wrong. What's that, dear? Why didn't you ask for my help? I didn't want your help on it. I'm a strong and independent woman who don't need no man to take care of her. Did you use my wax strips? Fuck, that sounds painful. It was kind of painful, and I did use the wax strip that you use. Well, I mean, you, it's not a used wax strip. I used my own wax strip, but I got it from your collection. No, yes, I did. Well, actually, I used both parts anyway. Anyway, en enough about my cosmetic life. Let's talk about the cocktail life, right? Right? Yes, of course. Of course you will. Today's cocktail is exactly what you need to help soothe the burn of any waxing experience. That's right, it's basically almost as close to alcohol you can get. Everclear! No, just kidding. It's vodka, as it says right here on there. Although, I'm sure you could sub out. No, I don't want to switch out this time around. Although, although, you know... Oddly enough, I have a book somewhere, it's not in this collection, but it's called Drink or something like that. And according to this book, the intro goes something along the lines of 100% alcohol, like ethyl alcohol, which is I believe the one that stuff that you drink, is supposedly sweet to the taste buds. However, it evaporates so damn fast that it creates a burning sensation. That's why alcohol burns. I don't think Everclear tastes sweet to me, but supposedly anybody who has drank an Everclear, <clears throat> Anna, would say that it might taste a little sweet if they managed to get past it. No, it's burning. No, it's burning, she says. Dom says, are you sure we shouldn't dive deeper into your cosmetic life? Cosmetic stream? Dude, that sounds like hypothetically you're speaking, life. hypothetically speaking, I wish that you would shut the fuck up. Cameron! But in addition to that, I wish that there would come a day where the streams start branching out from just the bartending video game stuff of life. One day we'll be doing wacky, wacky things like, I don't know, like waxing my body for charity. I think that would be so cool. Oh, that was can beautiful. I do your legs? That would be hilarious. Anna wants to wax my legs. And <laughs> like any good fiance, the answer is yes, dear, please. What the hell? In any case, today's cocktail will will bring us closer to the spirits, I suppose. I love that. I live for these moments, those moments, those moments. <laughs> I love that, honestly, there is a certain comedic effect of the whole like motorcyclist running by. It's great. And if I ever shave my legs, it's actually a super nice feeling. I have shaved my legs before. Actually, the last time I shaved my legs was, no, 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 I shaved them. The last time I shaved my legs was not last Halloween, but the Halloween before. I dressed up as a nun and I went to a Renaissance fair. And the reason why I shaved my legs was because I was like, oh my God, I'm wearing tights and they're basically see-through. I'm like, I don't want people looking at my ugly, hairy ass legs through, through like a, like, um, through a screen. I might as well make them as clean as I possibly can. It took me literally an hour to get all that stuff off of my legs, and it looked like you kill the hairy beast in the shower. And none of that stuff, like, I, I did it in the shower. It's very irresponsible for me to do. I had to shove all that stuff down the drain, realized I clogged the drain, unclogged the drain, and then, and by unclogging the drain, I mean I unscrewed the drain, kind of lifted all that gunk out of there, and then continued with the rest of my day. It was great. Dude, homie, speaking from experience, Nair. No. <laughs> Anna doesn't like that stuff. That stuff burns. My brother's it hurts, used, and it's worse than. My wax. brother has used Nair before, so I it wouldn't be the first time I've heard of it in my life. Shaving. Less, less than shaving. Well, I mean, you know, honestly, oh, so long as it's staying bad. just on the legs, I'm sure it works just fine. I've heard horror stories of people putting Nair in other people's shampoo and stuff, and it takes off all their hair. Uh, but then I guess the process of potentially getting soap in your eyes has further harmful, very, very per painful situation. Could you imagine taking the eyes off your eyeballs? I'm sorry, the hair off your eyeballs? Yeah, I didn't know I had hair there, but apparently it can be removed with Nair, according to the people of the internet. That and also, there's a story on Reddit, and I don't remember it by any other name than the Brussels sprout story, and it had something to do with this person, like, 
I don't know. I think they tried to quote unquote wax their butthole. They used Nair. It was burning. They had to put Brussels sprouts back there to make everything feel okay because it was a burning sensation like this this individual had never experienced before, which I think is hilarious. Although, you know, he just got sensitive skin. Anna's got sensitive skin. I got sensitive skin. I got sensitive everything, man. Everything is sensitive. Also, I just realized I'm wearing a black shirt today and I completely blend in with my blackout curtain back here. So we're going to go with that. Allow me to flip to the page of interest in this book today. The premise for this stream is Christmas in July, except it's not July, it is June, and although mo we try to stay away from the certain holidays and whatnot, so let's just say it's winter in June, because uh, I flipped to a random page in a book that I haven't used in a while. It's called Make Mine Vodka, 250 Classic Cocktails and Cutting Edge Infusions by Susan Wagoner and Robert Markle. Um, it's called Reindeer Martini. This is the page for Reindeer Martini. It's it's exactly what you may think it is. It's it's a martini uh, with with actual reindeer meat in it. No, just kidding. That's that's weird. Also, I find interesting that on the other page, the direct opposite page, is the screaming orgasm, which is not what I'm making today. However, it sounds like I feel like we could all use one of those right now. Oh, and on that page too, for your further drinking pleasure, if you don't mind making a bit of noise, maybe suggest a multiple orgasm, another cocktail, I assure you. Follow the recipe above, but reduce all four ingredients to a half each and add two ounces of light cream and or half and half. So we're not making it today, but in case you wanted to know how to have a screaming orgasm, one ounce of vodka, one ounce of Irish cream liqueur. Oh, all of these is 30 milliliters too. One ounce of coffee liqueur, one ounce of almond liqueur. If I had to choose mine, I would go with Skunktown Vodka, a local favorite. Uh, probably Brady's Irish Cream, because like it's cheaper than Bailey's and I think tastes about the same. Coffee liqueur, Mr. Black, all the way. And almond liqueur, I'd go with Di Serono, Amaretto. You, you just gotta. Am I planning to do a Pride Month drink or somehow a men's mental health inspired drink? I actually did a Pride Month inspired drink last week. It was the Prideful Milk Punch, where essentially we put bourbon and milk and then put a bunch of rainbow cereals on it. I went to the store to get as much of the rainbow colored stuff as I could possibly find, and I think it worked out pretty good. It's interesting. I, feel, I think I still have some left in the fridge over there. Um, a little secret into my life. I don't, now that I started doing these cocktail streams, I don't drink a lot of cocktails outside of the streams. So, you know, when you go to the doctor and they ask you like, you know, how much do you smoke? How much do you drink? I'm like, oh, I drink about once a week. And they're like, so why? You got, you got something going on? I was like, no, 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 I run a cocktail show. And they're like, why? You got something going on? It's pretty much the same question each time. You usually don't, <laughs> you usually don't do that. Oh, ooh, you must, must have explained that before I showed up. I believe, I might have, I might have. All the VODs, for those of you who may have missed it, are on YouTube if you want to go check them out. But you don't have to because they're like an hour long. And why would you want to sit through an hour long of a cocktail? I understand the reason why videos like that don't get views on YouTube. You want to know what the final drink looks like. You want to experience the recipe, the making, and the final production in a matter of seconds, which is not a type of content that I've become very good at creating yet. Maybe one day, potentially. But alas, the reindeer martini is this person, this person, the creators of this book, I said their names before, their version of the drink of the same name served at Harry's Velvet Room in Chicago, where mixologist Sherry Flynn, who created it, recommends using rain vodka, I don't have that, Frangelico, I also don't have that, and Malibu Room, which I do happen to have. I do have Malibu, and I definitely plan on using it. This recipe calls for two ounces, or about 60 milliliters of vodka, one ounce, or about 30 milliliters of hazelnut liqueur, one ounce, or 30 milliliters of coconut cream, and a splash of light cream. And we're gonna do... I'm changing it up just a little bit. It's basically the same recipe, so I'm not gonna take credit for this drink in the least bit. I'm just working with what ingredients that I have and trying to make things look even cooler. Um, let's jump right into it. I think that's a good idea. I'm gonna take my book and put it to the side. Um, I don't need it up on my little bar here. I need a cocktail shaker. Let's get a cocktail shaker. Bam! Awesome! That was so good looking. Now I need some ice. Let's find some ice. Oh, actually, I just remembered. Something that I've complained to myself about is the fact that when we're mixing the drinks in here, you can't see what's on the inside of the container. So I'm inclined to take this guy and move it because I don't need it anymore. Instead, what I'm going to use is I'm going to use a pint glass, which I'm going to scooch over here to go grab. Um, I thought I had a pint glass in here somewhere. Do I not have a pint glass? No. Oh. Oh. Excuse me, folks, for one minute. I'm gonna go grab a pint glass, because I'd rather y'all be able to see what's in the cocktail shaker as we're making it. Otherwise, it's just kind of watching a man pour random things into a metal container, and honestly, I mean, if you're not, it's that kind of stuff, cool. But I know if I had it my if I had my druthers and I had it my way, I'd be watching everything going into the glass. Every single little bit. 
Because, like, I feel like there's a certain entertainment factor to, you know, watching all the ingredients being put into the glass. Some would call it satisfying. Some would call it annoying. I would call it satisfying. And, uh, yeah, I actually need, I actually need the big side of the shaker, um, in order for things to fit properly. But essentially, yeah, you can do this. Pint glass. Just like a regular thing. But now you can actually see what's inside the glass. And so I think what I'll do is I will, I don't know if I did the zoom in super well. Do I need to? Eh, I don't know. I'll put it on a block. We'll try that. Try that. Eh, why not? Doing something new today. I'm cool with that. All right, put that all to the side. First ingredient we need is vodka. Yeah, two ounces. Okay, where's my, oh, where's my measuring majigger? There you are. That and vodka. We got Tito's today, a classic, and my father's favorite vodka, when we come to think of it. I'm digging the music this Wednesday. Yo, what do we got? What do we got today? Interesting. Is this still on the lo-fi playlist? I hope it is. Everything is supposed to be lo-fi, and so long as it remains to be so, then we're good. Let's make sure of that. That feels like... Yeah, it is. Wow, I've never heard this song before. This one's called Awake by Tom Dooley. That is fine. Man. These lo-fi play playlists continue to surprise me. It's by the lo-fi girl, by the way. It just transitioned to a different song, but it's been lo-fi for sure. Oh, thank goodness. I mean, it should be. That's the playlist that I'm playing. So, I personally, I love the lo-fi girl, and I love lo-fi music. When I was about three years into college, things started to get really, really stressful for me, and so I needed a way to listen to my music in a way that wouldn't distract me from my work, and I found lo-fi. If I had to describe it, the reason why I like lo-fi is that there are certain levels of my brain all working at the same time, and the lo-fi allows for my lower level of focus to settle and not be as noisy. And then the other part, and then the rest of my brain, the focus part, can actually focus on what it is that I'm actually doing at the time. Um, so, yeah, there that is. That's why I like lo-fi. My two favorite types of music are lo-fi and, I guess, video game music. Mostly video game music because, like, literally, it can be anything. Video game music is not a single... It's a category. It's not a genre. Like, not all the music sounds the same. However, I do like the nice 8, 8, 16 bit. I love chiptune. Chiptune's awesome. So we're gonna need... Two ounces of vodka. Oh, I need ice. Let's get ice. I don't know. When I when you do these types of glasses, do we put the ice in the... I guess we put the ice in the shaker, and then we put the ingredients in the pint glass? Maybe? I don't really know. Also, these ice cubes are having a very difficult time getting out of there. They're being very, very difficult. All right. Let's do this. Uh, put it in the glass. That one. Dave! Hello, Dave. Cameron. I'm Cameron. Shiva said hi. Cameron says hi. And put on a party hat. Well, you see, you're gonna have to earn that. <laughs> Which costs money and or follows. Or your firstborn child, if you can somehow manage to ship them over here if you have one. But, you know, uh, we try to convert things to currency first so I can spend that. I can't spend a firstborn child. Not that I want to. I'm not a big fan of child trafficking. Are nor trafficking in general. Children? I'm not collecting children. I just said that I don't, silly dear. Oh. Naughty, naughty. Naughty, naughty indeed. What else is naughty? Drinking on a Wednesday because I feel like I need it. Two ounces of vodka. Yeah, you know it. I'm working on my speed pours. Why am I supporting alcoholism? I am not. Two ounces of vodka. There you go. I'm not supporting alcoholism. I am alcoholing once a week, which at least I believe is a healthy consumption. Yo, welcome to the party, Dave. See, you've earned it. I'm gonna put on a tiny little green one. It's cute. This is. What color is this? What color is oh, it? No, no, no. Wait, it's wait. green. This is green. This is green. No, that looks blue. It's green. Let me see it. I think it's green. Let's go! I'm taking another one. Oh, it is green. It's complain green. about no, it. No, no, no. Put it on the mint green one. Oh, fine. Okay, fine. We put it on the mint green one. Jeez. No, no, no. You only get one. Okay, fine. Jeez. Watch out for my backpack. I have medical devices in here. Hi there. Whoa, shit. Oh, don't, don't click buttons you're not supposed to. Hi there, my name is Cameron. By night, I'm a live streamer on the internet, very professional. And by day, I get paid to be a firmware developer. This is a scale. I'm gonna play with it tomorrow. And I'm not gonna step on it because I don't abide by the rules of the system. Speaking of the system, we're following a cocktail recipe. Anyway, next step in the system, hazelnut liqueur. I don't actually have hazelnut liqueur. Actually, I do. I lied. What do you need me to get? This is hazelnut liqueur. I have it right here. I don't know why. I had a brain fart for a moment. I was like, I don't have hazelnut liqueur. It's literally right below the bar. <laughs> it's literally right here. I don't know why I lied to you all. I didn't need to. I don't use this very often. 
Um, it's literally got dust all over it, so allow me to kind of wipe that off a little bit. Give it the little, give it the little pumping dusty action. That's how we do it. Uh, we need an ounce, or about 30 milliliters of that, into a cocktail shaker, if you want it. Or straight into your mouth if you like that stuff. Honestly, this is super sweet. This liqueur is super sweet. I've had it before. I don't often use it because I'm not a big hazelnut guy, but the recipe calls for hazelnut, so that's what we go with. And honestly, now that I've got these speed pours, it is incredibly easy to pour shots into people's mouths. I've had these forever, but I really have never used them. I don't know why. Actually, I know exactly why. It's because I'm trying to get better with my speed pours, where you like kind of measure for a certain amount of time and you don't need the measuring majigger. But um, I'm learning just like everybody else is. Ideally, um, and here's an example with water. I have, this is my practice thing. Ideally, I would be able to pour into a glass a certain amount of seconds for a particular you know, amount of liquid. So I'm gonna try to do two ounces. All right, and if I did it correctly, there should be about two ounces of liquid in this, which I bet there isn't, but I tried it. All right, so that came out to about an ounce and a half, but whatever. Uh, also, this is water. I don't need water. Um, you can you can stay in there. Yeah, that's fine. You can, you can stay there. I'll clean you up later. Anyways, take these two bottles, put them on the ground. Don't need those anymore. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, this is the water bottle. I don't. <laughs> I get so confused. It says Plantation 3 Star Rum on it, but it's actually water, I assure you. It's definitely water. And if it's not water, we'll find out in about a half hour. Maybe 20 minutes. Oh dear. Maybe 10. The clock is ticking. The next ingredient that we need uh, for our reindeer martini is one ounce of coconut rum. I've got Malibu. It's the one that they recommend. Hydrated dihydrate, you know what they say? 100% of people who consume H2O in their lifetime will die. Every single person. With that in mind, everybody who drinks alcohol eventually dies as well. Everybody who does anything will eventually die, except for the one person in the world who's immortal. Yes, I know you're out there. Um, my DMs are open. Tell me your secrets. I want to know your secrets. And so does the rest of the world, too. I promise I won't monetize it. I will instead work with you to be able to, you know, allow us to both coexist in this world. It's a, mu it's a mutual thing. Like, I get a lot out of it, and you probably get significantly less out of it comparatively. But, you know, we're all trying to be bros here. You could say the same thing about breathing. Every single person who inhales carbon dioxide will die. Or oxygen. Ox also, oxygen is explosive. So can you imagine what it must be doing to your cells on the inside? I mean, come on, guys. Water is an electro, it is a polar molecule. That means it basically makes electricity in your, in your body, which is obviously killing you. Just like uh, what's-his-face said about alternating current way back in the day. Uh, uh, ben Franklin or whoever it was, I don't know. Dude, I don't want to live forever. 70 years is enough. I don't want to live forever either. I see all these shows talking about like immortality or people who gain it. 121 is the year that I will be dying, 121 years after my birth, according to Anna. Otherwise, I don't know, what is she gonna do? <laughs> She'll murder me. So if I die before the age of 121, Anna says that she will murder me. She, I will die, and then she will kill me. Which is not something I think that I would care about, because I'd be dead. My spirit would have left my body and gone to someplace else, or perhaps nowhere at all. That's a matter for philosophy or falafel. The next ingredient that I require in this glass is a splash of light cream. Now, I went to the store today and I bought myself some cinnamon sticks. Usually I do that at least, I, I, sometimes I go out and I buy ingredients. I didn't do that for the light cream today. I bought the cinnamon sticks. I didn't like, I didn't want the light cream because the last time I bought light cream, I used it once. I used a single dash of it or whatever it was and then it completely molded in the fridge and it was disgusting and chunky and oh so, so nasty. Um, so I decided instead of doing the light cream, and letting it go to waste because we really don't use a lot of like lactose stuff in this house i decided to just go for one of my cream liqueurs and change things up a little bit i don't know if i've ever used these pralines and cream liqueur on the show but it's it's lovely it tastes good and it's it smells like also hazelnut so it kind of it kind of mixes with or pecans pecans it smells like pecans but it mostly smells like sugar it's almost maple syrupy when you smell it and it's very tasty it's one of anna's not this one in particular, but the regular praline liqueur is one of Anna's favorite things to drink. You just take some of that, shake it with some ice, pour it back out. She loves it. It's great. It's sweet. It's a little nutty, but it's mostly sweet. 
and we like that. And camera, stop, stop adjusting on my flip phone. She will bring you back just to kill you. That's what she'll do to me. She will bring me back to life, resurrect me, only to kill me again and be like, how dare you? Slice and dice. So this recipe only calls for a dash of light cream, a splash, a splash, not a dash, a splash. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to literally put a splash of my pralines and cream liqueur. Yes. Okay, that was a rather large splash. Well, I splashed it, and that's exactly how, <laughs> that's how it's gonna stay, because I can't unsplash it. That was a rather large splash coming up think of it. In any case, I think you showed the liquor when you bought it. Did I really? When did I get this? I don't remember when I got this. The, 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 interestingly enough, the praline liqueur, actually, a little backstory here. Over a year ago, I, um, I was perusing through my bartender's black book right here. It's one of the, it's my first cocktail book I ever got. My mother gave it to me. It's, it's awesome. I, I love this book. It's got a lot of recipes in it. But I was flipping through and I found praline liqueur and I was like, whoa, I didn't know praline liqueur was a thing. And I couldn't, and I lost my page, so I tried to go back looking for it, and I couldn't find where the praline liqueur went. But I swear that I found praline liqueur. So I was like, hey, mom, have you ever heard of praline liqueur? Could you get some? Could you tell me where to find some? We were like, we have no idea. Nothing in New Jersey had it. Nothing in Pennsylvania had it. But we went down south to South Carolina, where my buddy's mother lives now, uh, and also where we do our family vacation. And one of the stores called him up and said, you got praline liqueur? And they were like, yeah, of course we do. Evangeline's. It's the standard down here. And I was like, oh, my God. So we found praline liqueur which is up in one of my cabinets over there. And then it kind of became a thing of, it's Anna's favorite and you can only get it down south. So my buddy's mother, whenever they would come up to visit or whenever we would go down to visit, she'd have a bottle set aside for us to kind of take back with us. So there's like two bottles up there. Uh, we use them relatively often uh, when we do like you know, recreational cocktail type stuff. Um, but the pralines and cream one was one that she got completely like, like I didn't ask her to do that, but it was just like, she was saying, hey, I was at the store and I found a pralines and cream liqueur and I had to get it for you. And it's, it's good. It's very good. It's, um, do I have, um, oh, I didn't put it on my jigger, but it, it smells good. It's great. Yeah, I talked about the story when I got it. I definitely did. Oh, nice. Oh, here's the story again, in case y'all forgot. So what I have in my cocktail glass is vodka, hazelnut liqueur, coconut rum, and a splash of cream liqueur of your choice. Mine was pralines and cream, and I think it's wonderful. This is what it looks like in the glass right now, in case you were curious. It's milky, um... Not completely opaque. There's a certain translucency to it. That's not that bad. Looks pretty good. Uh, so let's let's shake it up. Let's pour it on in. Pop that seal. Get that seal going and give it a shake. Yo, first time. What's up, Kof Kofixio? Kofixio. Yo, saw you on Sparks Discord and figured you'd check in because I do love a good drink. Well, I hope you do. I hope this is a good drink too. I've never tried it before. That's what we do. We just try drinks every single week, and if it tastes good, that's a plus. If not, Whatever. Don likes my stories to tell me when to make my drinks. I like that. This is the place to be. And the place to be is right in front of the microphone so that everybody gets to hear what the shake sounds like. That's okay. That's probably a little loud. I actually did a bit of microphone management the other day on my other microphone. I have one over here that I haven't done the same love and care to. Eventually. I'm a busy boy. Busy boy can't do things all the time. Yeah, I just came to a realization, and this is that realization. You ever play on the Wii, the Nintendo Wii, and you've got those nunchucks and stuff? Yo, welcome to the party, Kofixio. Kofixio, is that an L? Kofixio, Kofixo, Kofixo. It feels Italian, I don't know why. Party head for you, that's what we do around here. You ever watch Bar Rescue? I haven't, but I know what it's about. I think that's the one where they go into the bar and well, they, I guess they, they essentially rescue it. I guess that's kind of in the name. Where they like kind of take like the, the failing bars and just like make them good. If that's the correct one. I've never actually watched it. Never actually watched it. Oh, but what I was thinking about is you ever play the Wii and you have the nunchucks in the Wii remote and you like, you gotta stop yourself. You have to use the little armbands to prevent yourself from throwing your Wii remote into the television. Well, I just noticed this is my television right here. This is my television. Um, and I just realized if I like don't hold these cocktail shakers enough or these things compact together, I will literally smash my television. Which honestly wouldn't be that big a deal. It's a little old and to be honest one of the fixtures is a little cockeyed anyway So it it could potentially fall at any moment. It's very precariously and haphazardly placed like that, but It allows me to watch my Disney Plus on my Amazon Fire Stick. So why am I complaining? All right, next we'll do we're gonna actually put the cocktail in the cocktail glass. Also, I hear a bunch of people kind of 
stomping on the ground upstairs. I'm in the, I'm in the middle apartment. There are people above, there are people below. I try not to stomp too hard here because it bothers the people below. Not really, they never said anything. And I have no idea about the people upstairs. But I'm sure they're having a wonderful time. Dom says, moral of the story, break your television. I mean, so if I took out insurance on the television, it just so happened to be the victim of some terrible accident, could probably have enough money to buy a new television. But alas, story for, maybe that's an experience for another day. You you watch, your uh, stream's gonna start one time and the television is gonna be noticeably missing. You'll be like, Cameron, what happened to the television? You'll be like, well, there was an insurance claim filed the other day. Dom says you should vacuum your ceiling now. My vacuum is way over there. I couldn't even if I tried to, but do I have a long object? Here, here's an ironing board. We have a bunch of random shit. By the way, there's a bunch of random shit that is off camera that literally I could grab any of it and everyone would be confused. Here's an ironing board. Let's touch the ceiling. Eesh. In any case. Anyway, I don't need that anymore. Let's put the ironing board away. See, that's the thing, right? When we all become big streamer boys, girls, and those in between, we'll be able to do whatever we want on stream. We'll iron our clothes, and people will be like, subs, bits, subs, bits. And we'll be like, yes, ironing clothes is important. I do it every day. I don't. It's a lie. We could we could literally be, we could be sleeping on camera, and everyone would be like, wow, look at that person sleeping. I love them sleeping. And they'd be like, subs, bits, money. I don't understand the internet. It's just people tend to make a profit on it. And it, it astounds me more and more every single day. This is a first. This is a first. First for the ironing board. All right, let's zoom on in. Um, you'll notice this is a this is a martini, technically. So I have a martini glass. The problem is I have two martini glasses. This is one. And this is the other one. It's a very large one. I have a very large one and a very small one. I don't want to make a large cocktail today. I don't need to. So I'm going to put the large glass away and use the funny looking small one. We got this glass from a place called Gatorland USA. This is supposed to be an alligator? Maybe? I don't exactly know. But, you know. Lo-fi drinks and chill vibes. Man, it's a good evening. I love that small glass. I love this little guy. His name is Timothy. I just named him now. Hello, Timothy. I was going to... I just had a thought about what if I kissed the eye and... That's a. That's definitely not the first time I've thought of that. Did, it wasn't. Isn't there? I remember seeing a thing going around a while ago, and it was like, "Oh, did you know that this particular culture licks each other's eyeballs as a sign of romance?" And I was like, "Okay, that's valid." But why you gotta make us big stink about it? My goodness, Gatorland. You mean in Florida? Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> we got it in Florida. It's great. I just spray my clothes with water and throw my wrinkled clothes in this dryer to get the wrinkles out. I don't worry about wrinkles too much. I probably should worry about wrinkles, but I just don't. I just don't for some reason. All right, what's in our cocktail shaker? Let's do, uh, we'll do a review at the end. That's what we'll do. All right, beautiful, beautiful. Oh my God, no, there's a, oh, get the fly out of here. We have pest control coming tomorrow. We have a case of flies and mice in the apartment and it is absolutely disgusting. I sincerely apologize for that dreadful display. All right, and I think it's perfectly sized. Oh, so satisfying. I love it when the cocktail proportions are satisfying and incredibly hard to move around because it's in a martini glass of all things. Oh, bet, say less, I'm in. Remember that place, you had a baby gator there. Oh my God. Dude, I am um, in Gatorland. The thing that I was most impressed about was the dude who was wrestling an alligator. Did you know, supposedly, it takes an alligator, it's a lot of force for an alligator to close its mouth, but it needs a lot of force in order to open its mouth. So all you need to do is like, hold a gator's mouth shut and it can't open it. Like it literally can't hurt you. So that's your survival tip. Just, just, Give the gator a little a little hold, just like that, right in between your arms. And it might thrash around a little bit, do a little bit of rodeo action, but you will be totally fine from the snappage, supposedly. Oh my god, there's a lot going on. Need something to keep me sane during the work week. Dude, seriously though, no jaw burning strength, correct. Well, I hope these cocktails do that for you. So now, this is the reindeer martini as it was described in the book. There's some garnishes that go on at the end, but... Being that it's supposed to be a winter cocktail, I thought that it'd be really, really cool to try and see if we can flare it up a little bit. I've got some luster dust right here. Luster, I hardly know her. Yeah, it's a disgusting joke. By, uh, it's Pearl Dust. Super Pearl by Oh Sweet Art. And I'm just gonna add the tiniest amount of dust to this cocktail 
And what it's gonna do is it's gonna give it a shimmering effect, kind of like a kind of like a snow, if you will. Let's see. You really don't need much. I think the last time I used this, you needed literally less than a twelfth of a tablespoon. So I'm just gonna like very carefully, very carefully, very carefully. A little bit, 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 a little bit. I think that's enough. Maybe we'll need more. Honestly, I don't really know. And I'm just gonna kind of mix it around a bit and see if we get a little swirling effect going on here. Uh, this might have not been the best idea to do in the glass itself because I probably could have done it in the shaker, honestly. Hello, are you working? I had no guarantee whether this was gonna work or not, but we're trying our best here. I don't see any sparkle yet. Maybe it needs a bit more. Let's do a little bit more. A little bit more. A little bit more. Or a lot of bit more if I screw up. Eh, that feels good. That feels good. All right, let's shimmer around a little bit. Do, 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 do. How you doing? It's a little, I'll admit, it's a little too opaque. That's not really taking as best as I wanted to. But what if I shine a light through it? This is an experimental show too. I'm no professional. How does that look? Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, there's a little bit of sparkle going on. Just the tiniest bit of sparkle. You really can't see it. What if I... Hmm. I have an idea. I have an idea. I'm gonna turn the lights off and see if that helps at all. I'm gonna try this. Honestly, it'd be totally... Oh, oh my god, I can't the names. Kofixo would be happy to go to the Gator Room. I love that. Uh, go to Gator Rodeo. The Rodeo. I don't know. That sounds terrifying. All right, let's turn the lights off and see if we can get a shimmering effect. How's that looking? Can we see shimmer? Are we shimmering yet? Shimmer. Shimmer and shine. Nope. What if I shine it from this angle? Shimmer and shine? No, but damn, that looks cool in this light. Oh, I love this shot. And here's my creepy ass face in the background. Ooh, spooky. In any case, let's <laughs> turn everything back on. That was kind of cool for a moment there. I couldn't get the shimmer effect. That's so unfortunate. Oh, well, it's probably because it's a really opaque cocktail. That, that kind of makes sense. Ooh, hey, Kofixo, how do you say your name? Kofi, Kofi, oh, Kofi, Kofi. I like that. It's not creepy. My face isn't creepy. What if I... No, it's okay. It's okay. Um, all right. Well, the luster dust didn't really work so well, but we gave it a try. I will not be adding that to the recipe when I post this later. It's no need. It really didn't do much of the effect. Anyway, time for the, the actual... It's called the reindeer martini because you're supposed to garnish it to make it look like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. So all we're going to do... We get the maraschino cherry for Rudolph's red nose, right? <laughs> this is this is funny. And then we're also gonna add two cinnamon sticks, which I just bought at Whole Foods today. Which, this hold on. Here's a nitpicky thing. Why? Why would you use this type of container top for cinnamon sticks? Like, oh, I'm gonna go into my spice cabinet and add a little bit of. Not coming out. Not gonna come out. One, because I haven't opened it yet, but now that I've opened it, and I put the thing back on, it just... Not gonna do anything. It's dumb. Nah, you got a good face. Very trustworthy. Very trustworthy fa fa face. I've been told I look like a very trustworthy individual. I mean, what I've been told. It's all about the smile, supposedly. That's what they, that's what they taught me in, at the school, I guess. I don't know. I was never really taught how to be a good person. I just kind of learned it, I guess. All right, I'm gonna use, I need one maraschino cherry. I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna put this on camera so things look like I'm doing stuff. I'm still practicing on how to make everything happen in the camera, so it's a learning experience for everybody. One maraschino cherry, I'm gonna snack for camera. Um, this is supposed to go, I guess this floats? I don't, I don't know, so like, I think this is supposed to float. Oh, wait, 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 no, no, no. I see it on the front of the glass. Okay, okay, so if I put that at the bottom. Oh, that doesn't look good. Hold on. I'm gonna make this look great. Oh, come on, reindeer. Maybe if I put a second one in there. I completely understand how they intended to garnish this thing now. This all, all makes sense. So if I put the thing on the front. Yeah, okay, okay. This is good, this is good. There's Rudolph's red nose. Right there. Excellent. Excellent. Oh, I guess this will be a... I honestly thought this was going to be a top shot cocktail. But this is a front shot. You got to take a picture of it from the front or else it don't look so good. And we'll take two cinnamon sticks. One. And two. To act as 
uh, what's his face? Rudolph. Rudolph's antlers. So, Rudolph the red nosed reindeer had a very shiny nose. And if you ever saw him, you would even say it glows. Oh, no, 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 I'm messing things up. No, it, you know what? It's. Hey, Rudolph, where's Santa? I guess that kind of works. That kind of works. It's not, honestly, it could be so much worse. Oh, I'm not a big fan of those cherries, honestly. I like, I like, I have some other cherries in the fridge, and I think they look a lot better than that, to be perfectly honest. This is, let's recap things. This is the reindeer martini. It's got two ounces of vodka, or about 60 milliliters or so. One ounce of hazelnut liqueur, about 30 milliliters. One ounce of, what's the other one, coconut rum like 30 milliliters as well and a splash of light cream or your favorite cream liqueur we put some luster dust into it it didn't really work out that well and you make reindeer's face by putting a cherry and two cinnamon sticks as antlers i don't think that's too bad now before we get into the tasting aspect of it all I'm trying to set a little bit differently for a little bit of context what i also try to do is after the fact, we, we take some we take some photos of this and I put it on an Instagram. I'm trying to get better at photography and whatnot, so this is kind of my way to attempt to get better at that. So I'm gonna take a picture, but I'm gonna do a little bit. I'm gonna do a little bit differently this time. I'm gonna try as best as I can to like narrate the photography process and stuff like that. Not that it's very different. You just click a button, but I'm trying something different this time. So bear with me, if you will, while I set things up a little bit. So it's winter, right? You've got Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. So I think ideally what you want to do is you want to set things up winter style. The best winter style that I can think of is you add a little bit of snow. So I'm going to take this white tablecloth, or what I'm calling a tablecloth. It is most definitely not the curtains that came with the apartment that I very swiftly replaced because they don't look that good. I'm going to put a little, I'm going to set the scene a little bit with some blanketed snow, or what I'm calling blanketed snow. I think that looks all right. It kind of looks, it actually kind of looks like a snow mound. It's really cool looking. Now I'll put Rudolph back on top, paying careful attention to make him face the camera properly. Oh, that spot there. oh don't, don't flip over. I need to flatten that a little bit. Otherwise that is totally gonna spill everywhere. I do not want it to spill everywhere. All right, let's try this a bit. Flatten it, maybe? Oh, actually the back looks better. The back feels better. Oh no, don't spill. Oh, don't spill, don't spill, don't spill. Oh my God, don't spill. All right, this is, this is okay, I think. I am very stressed placed. This is so precariously placed. Oh my goodness. I need to put something back here. Hold on. I have lawn chairs. I have tiny lawn chairs. I'm going to put a tiny lawn chair in the back to hold this cocktail up as I inch it forward. Just a tad. No. Oh, it's spilled. Oh, no. Okay, well, that's okay. We'll keep with it. I'm, I'm okay with it. We're not going to play anymore with it. Man, that tastes good. Best cocktail show this side of the galaxy. Damn right it is. Uh, and now, I'm gonna change the lighting a little bit. Now I'm gonna go to my central control booth and change to the pre-made winter cocktail setup. It's blue. It's just very bright. Um, I don't know if that looks good from the camera's perspective. We're gonna try it. All right, I zoom in a little bit. Oh, I wish I could change the camera setting a little. Honestly, that, that looks all right. I'm okay with that. This is Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer. This is Timothy, not Rudolph. This is Rudolph with the red nose and the reindeer antlers. If you made this faster, you could potentially add chocolate syrup for eyes. Oh, this is fair. This is fair. Oh, that's a, hmm, you're right. I like that idea. But I don't, I don't I think I have chocolate, I don't think I have chocolate syrup. There might be some in the fridge, but if I walk around this thing now, it will most certainly spill everywhere. Anyway, now we go for the obligatory Instagram picture. It's, it's a thing that we do. It's a thing that I do at least. It's Rudolph the red nosed reindeer. He looks, it looks all right. We're trying our best here. Honestly, I think the whole funny looking Timothy Gator, that's what really brings this show together. All right, it looks good. Oh, oh, and uh, this is this is what it looks like. I mean, y'all can probably tell already, but we'll post some more later. We'll make it better. You can freeze the glass and add the syrup to which it would help with keeping the smear or run. You're right about that. If you add a little bit of the syrup, right? And then kind of put it in the fridge, then it'll become less, it'll become more viscous and stay upright. All right, I'm going to take this curtain and move it off my table and probably clean it later. 
and not wobble my table. All right, dirty curtain. Dirty curtain incoming. Get it. Get over there. All right, let's fix everything up. Back to normal. Back to normal time stream. And then we're going to try this thing. That's what we'll do. All right, I don't need my yoga blocks no more. Everything is very sticky now. Everything is very haphazardly placed. We'll, we don't need that. And I don't thank you for your service, lawn chair. You actually failed us completely. But, you know, it's fine. All right. This is the Reindeer Martini, starring Timothy and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. It smells... It smells very prominently of the hazelnut and the praline. They kind of smell about the same to me, in my opinion. Oh, what is this? Oh, random question. Would you rather eat a snail or a snake? I would rather eat a snake because I've eaten snails too many times already. I like that. I've actually... I've eaten snake. I, yeah, I know. I have. I've eaten snake before. I've eaten snake, and I've eaten... I've eaten snail. I've eaten snail a lot more, and I'm used to it. I like snail. I love escargot. Um, snake? This makes a little more... It's meaty. I like the meat part of it all. It smells very hazelnutty. Very, very nice. And it tastes... Woohoo! That is boozy. Wow. That is very, very boozy. That is... That hits me, like right in the back of the throat <clears throat> in terms of the alcohol content in there. And come to think of it, it's literally all alcohol and various levels of liqueur because there's no light like, cream in there. So like, it's not really evening things out at all. It's good though. I think it mostly tastes of, it mostly tastes of the cream that's in there and the hazelnut. It's just a very nutty drink in general. It's like, honestly, you could have probably done with the, without the coconut rum and it would probably taste about the same. Although I want to, Malibu's got a very nice flavor to it, and I wonder if I can piece that out. Yeah, yeah. There's something a little bit different in there, and that's probably the Malibu. Although, I wouldn't say it's necessarily coconutty. I wouldn't say that it's necessarily, um, like, rummy. I would say it's mostly the hazelnut. It's the, mostly the hazelnut shining through there. I would think... I would think... I would probably make this taste better for me if I added more Malibu and less of the nut-based liqueurs. That's, that would be my opinion on it. Dom says, oh, Dom says, I think they've gotten this before, but rather eat a snake too. A snake, a snake is, a snake right, too, a snake is super juicy. Oh, it's a drink, wanna try it? Please don't spill, or do spill, honestly. We can clean it up later. There's no problem with that. Would you make it again? Would I, what is Annie's opinion? Anna, what is your opinion? I think I would make it again. I would make it differently, but I would make it again. Anna does not seem to like it. Yeah, you can tell. I like the nut part. Excellent. You're gonna spill that thing. I'm not gonna spill it. Actually, this thing, so this glass was precariously built because if you can't tell, the flippers are very close to this thing's center of mass and it's a martini glass. So this thing wants to flip over, but God's willing to let it stay upright. Oh, I also didn't mention before, if you put your nose right up to the cinnamon, it smells like cinnamon. So it's not all nut, only partially nut. Good. I like that. Actually, now that I'm getting the cinnamon off that, it tastes pretty good. It's mellow. I don't know what it is about it. it. Tastes a little bit different now. Did you stir it? Oh, because I'm sipping, I'm sipping closer to the cinnamon. Honestly, okay. Sipping closer to the cinnamon changes it up a little bit. That's actually more pleasant there, because not only do you have the nut of the hazelnut, and if you use the praline, then the praline there too, but it's also got that almost winter spice to it. It's actually very, it's warm now. And maybe it's because it's so boozy that I feel this warm, but it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling amidst the very clear cold weather of the winter, he says in early June. I would definitely make that again, yeah. Also, cherries. I love maraschino cherries so much. And that brings thing, all things together. That's very tasty. I can't wait. I can't wait to continue enjoying that later on. Well, that was the cocktail for today. Thank you everybody for coming to the cocktail hour. Today was the reindeer martini. It's got vodka, it's got liqueur, and hazelnut, and praline, and 
whatever the other thing was. It's got Malibu, but you really can't tell. And it sort of kind of looks like... I could tell there was Malibu. And I could tell there was Malibu, but taste is subjective. So honestly, why are we surprised? But it's good. I'd make it again. It's nice. Um, I don't know. Would I? Well, how would I rate this? Let's do a rating. One out of ten. We never do ratings. We'll do a rating. I'm gonna call this one a six and a half. I don't not like it. It's good. I'd do it again. I'd give it a two. Yeah, and it gives it a two out of ten. Out of ten. Two out of ten. You know how hard it is to get above like a seven. It's true, it's true. I think only one one wine has ever gotten above that level for you, right? Yeah, and it's out of seven. Oh no no no, no. it's out of eight. Out of, it's out of eight. Eight out of ten? Yeah, it's the pink. It's, it's the Stella, one. right? Stella Rosa. Pink Stella Rosa. It's a Stella Rosa. Anna loves, Anna's favorite uh, wine is Stella Rosa. For those of you who are curious. My favorite wine is not. I'm not a big fan of wine. Mead's good, though. Oof, Anna roasted it hardcore. Seriously, though. What's Anna's favorite drink? She loves the praline liqueur shaken with ice and then strained out. No ice in it afterwards. No, it I gives like it... the ice in it. Oh, she likes the ice in it. Because it dulls down the flavor. Okay, okay. She Look likes things shaken, not stirred. It's very sweet to her, and she likes that. In any case, thank you everybody so much for coming along to the bar time. This has been wonderful. I look for, oh, a uh, quick message, and that is there will be no cocktail stream. There will be no stream next Wednesday. It is my youngest brother's graduation from high school, so I will be out that day. I still don't know whether or not that we'll be doing something else throughout the week, because there's no Monday stream either, so technically if we don't do anything, there won't Monday be a stream next week. Monday is our anniversary as well. We'll figure things out. I think there's some things on the on the plate. I don't know what we'll do yet. I was th actually thinking about reading a book, but it's smut. And maybe we'll save that for a more intimate night. You don't do that on my anniversary. Yeah, maybe not on the anniversary. Anyway, food for thought for later. Thank you everybody so much for coming along and joining us for cocktail hour. It's been Bye. right. Monday, you say? Oh yeah, we got special things, right? It's the 13th, right? Yeah. A week from two days ago? No, wait a minute. I think you did the... Hold on, hold on. I must double check this. Because it's the 15th when your brother graduates. There You're right! Days. It's our anniversary! It's on Monday! Oh that's my god, it's so cool! It's eight years. That is so cool. Do you want to stream? <laughs> oh my, gay fanfic is still being written as well. Dude, I would love to read that on stream. Actually, the book that I was talking about is called Ice Planet Barbarians. I really want to read it live it's for everybody. It's not gay. It's, no, the book isn't gay, but it's smut. Dom's fanfic is gay. Why is Dom in my book? Don't ask questions! Why not? That's the Brian's proper answer. Anyway, <laughs> I can't wait to enjoy this cocktail on the other side. Thank you, everybody. Again, I can't say thank you enough. You beautiful, beautiful folks out there. If you're into video games, stick around. If not, I will see you in two weeks this time. Maybe I'll post a cocktail on Instagram. I'm honestly not so sure. Anyway, bye, everybody. Party on until next time and all that other good jazz and whatnot. Bye! you do it for free. So, gonna take a whiff of the rich yet delicate scent of my world-renowned feet? Just a quick sniff. That's disgusting!